Hi, it's Dr. Watson, and this week in band, we talk about what is a scale in music. The word scale means a lot of things to a lot of people. A scale can be a device used to weigh or compare things. To see how much you weigh, you step on a scale. You might use a special scale to weigh food in a grocery store or when cooking at home. Some refer to the scales of justice in terms of weighing the evidence and figuring out what is just. A completely different kind of scale are the protective scales on fish and reptiles. In this video, we discuss scales in music and the song Scaling New Heights, number 22, in your Sound Innovations lesson book. Okay, let's talk scales. Simply stated, scales are adjacent notes on the staff alternating lines and spaces like this. Space, line, space, line, space, line, space, line. You might have heard people use um, syllables when they're singing notes in the scale like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, so, do. If you look on the board here, I have a treble clef and a bass clef. Treble clef for our treble clef instruments uh, playing in band, like our flutes, clarinets, alto saxes, trumpets, tenor sax. And we have a, a bass clef for our bass clef instruments, like the trombone and baritone and tuba. And I want to show you a scale on those staffs. Now, some of you have only learned a few notes, but I'm going to put a complete scale on the staff, and you know some of the notes that you recognize will be there, but some that you don't recognize will also be there. That's for either higher or lower instruments. So, for instance, the first couple notes that our trumpets and clarinets learned were here, and notice I'm going on a line, the line below the staff, and then a space below the staff, and then a line, right? And then our French horns learned, you know, notes somewhere around here, our flutes learn notes from B, you know, this, this line note here, and then C, and D, and E. Uh, maybe, maybe you're up to F now. And um, there's other notes that are even lower than this C, like that B and that A. Well, the reason I put all of these notes is so that you can see the names of those notes remind you of the alphabet. Like this low note, two lines below the staff, that's an A. And then this right underneath one line, that's a B. This note that's on the line below the staff, that's a C. And then this note is a D. And then this note on the bottom line of the staff is an E. Bottom space is an F. You get the idea? A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, what will the next note be, right? If I'm going line, space, line, space, line, space, the next line will be the next note in the alphabet, G. Of course, that is the musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's only seven letters, and then we start repeating them. So this is the note A, right? This here is the note A, and then this is B. Our flutes learn B flat, right? There was a flat sign in their book. They learn B flat, but B. And then this is C, and this is D, and this is E, and this is F. All right, so what you're looking at are the notes arranged in a scale, meaning alternating lines and spaces, or consecutive letter names in the alphabet. So that's what we mean by a scale. Let's do the same thing with our bass clef. Our um, first notes that were learned for our bass clef instruments, uh, I think D is where we started, and then we went down to C, then we went down to B. Actually, it was B flat, so I'll put a little flat sign there. Um, and then we expanded it to E, and actually it was E flat, so I'll put a little flat sign there. And then F, but if I fill in the lower note below B is A, right? That's the note A, and then that's B, C, D, E, F. So just like I did up above, if this low bottom space on the bass clef staff is low A, this is a B, this is a C, this is a D, this is an E, and this is an F. So what's the next letter in the alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, the next note up would be G, right? And that's where we're going to be headed, is G. So when we say a scale, what we mean is alternating lines and spaces on the staff and consecutive letters of the alphabet. Another thing is you can have scales that go up and scales that go down. So right now, if I play the notes this direction, right, that's an ascending scale. And if I play the notes from high to low coming down, that's a descending scale. Right? So you can go up the scale and you can go down the scale. The last thing I want to show you on the staff here is some people refer to the different um, levels of a scale as steps, right? The, the bottom step, the next step. So if you look at the notes, let's just start right here. Think of it like going up steps. Then we go to the next step of the scale, the next step of the scale, the next step of the scale, right? So those alternating lines and spaces go up one letter name at a time. It's kind of like somebody climbing 
stairs or climbing steps. So we could say this is a step of the scale, the first step, the second step, the third step, the fourth step, the fifth step, and so, so on. So anyway, that's what a scale is. And now we're gonna talk about uh, how to play a song that's based on a scale that's in your book. Okay, and here is number 22, Scaling New Heights, as it appears in the flute book. So this is the flute music. And notice that the first five notes form an ascending scale, alternating line space, line space, line, forming the notes B flat C, D, E flat, and F. It's worth noting that this was not the order that these notes were presented in the book. The flutes first learned how to play a D, and then a C, and then a B flat, then later we learned how to play E flat and F. So they've been arranged here from low to high, and it's important for players to learn to play scales like this, low to high one step at a time. So flute players will have to work on changing from B flat to C to D to E flat to F. Okay, here are the notes for the clarinet and trumpet. Those instruments learned E first, then D, then C, and then later F and G. But now we're seeing all of those notes arranged in scale order, C, D, E, F, G. And again, it's important that players learn to play those notes in that order as an ascending scale. Next, we'll look at the alto sax notes. And the saxophone learned B first, then A, then G, and then later on learned C, and then finally D. And here we see the notes in ascending scale order, G, A, B, C, D. So again, saxophones, it's important that you are able to play those notes in that order, as in the beginning of this song. The tenor saxes have to play the notes C, D, E, F, G. Of course, again, it's not the order that you learned them in the book, but it is an ascending scale order. Our French horns have to play F, G, A, B flat, C in ascending scale order. Our trombones and baritones have to play B flat, C, D, E flat, F in the ascending scale order. And tuba have to play low B flat, C, D, E flat, and F ascending scale order at the beginning of this song. Okay, band friends, now you know what a scale is and that you have an ascending scale at the beginning of exercise number 22, Scaling New Heights in your Sound Innovations lesson book. It is so important that you learn how to master changing fingering from one note to the next note as you go up that scale. So work really hard on those first few measures of exercise number 22. Later on in that same exercise, you'll have to skip around between those notes. So exercise number 22 is a very important exercise in the book and I look forward to hearing you play it. Practice hard, and we'll see you in your lesson.